Hello VR addicts, welcome to my channel, I am Paolo Triani and today we're doing the review of the HTC Vive Cosmos Elite and the lens mod for it. So shall we jump into that then? Well, we would normally start with the build here, but as this is the same review as the original Cosmos, I would suggest you go and watch that review, which is up there. Well, I liked the look of the original Cosmos and some people didn't like it. So I guess it's subjective between person and person. Well, those elves at HTC, well, they're not elves. Well, who wrote it on the teleprompter? Ah, I did, okay. I've missed the meant it's like they are busy as elves that you know from making presents, for instance, like Santa and the uh, shoemaker. So I'm not being offensive there. I digress. HTC has added the outside out tracking plate to it and they've also given it a sprinkle of black paint. Yes, so now this looks damn sexier as well. So. Overall, I think these changes uh, make it look a little bit more better to me and more cooler. That's definitely for sure. But again, that's my opinion. The next part is normally comfort, which you just saw the big thing going across. Um, well, I would recommend you go and watch the Cosmos review as the comfort is pretty much the same. So I will say that I kind of feel like it's a lot better when you wear it like a crown, because I moaned about it being a bit, a bit, bit pressurey here. But I have to say that if you wear it like a crown, you don't get so much pressure. And because the sweet spot's not as high on the vertical, it kind of helps to have it a little higher as well. Just my recommendation if you end up getting one or if you've got this kind of slope going on. I think that people with the slope work really well with the halos, people with the flatter heads or the curved head, do not. Performance. Well, this is quite the same here. So I'll talk about this briefly. Well, I say briefly, but I'm gonna talk about it a lot. I'm just gonna go over it again. You know what I'm saying? Also, if you're looking for my opinions on the lens mod, you'll find that down later on near the end of this review, okay? So now I would still moan about the sweet spot on this headset and it's still lacking in that area, but oddly it's better than the original Cosmos. And I don't know how that's possible because I'm pretty much sure it's all the same, but the sweet spot has slightly improved on this headset, but it's still not good enough in my opinion. But when I got it again, I can appreciate those blacks. They are really, really deep blacks in there. It's obviously not OLED, so the, those blacks will drown out the color, but the color does pop where those blacks are not present. So, you know, if you've got like a lot of bright sceneries and lots of colors popping out at you, then it's gonna look amazing, it will pop. Um, if you've got a really dark corridor and there's some color in there, then it might get drowned out by the higher, deeper blacks due to the fact that it's not an OLED. But it looks damn good. God rays seem to be reduced as well. I thought the God rays were pretty much similar to the first generation headsets, you know, like the CV1 and the Vive. Um, similar to that kind of glare and God rays on the original Cosmos, but on this, it seemed to be hugely reduced. And that was quite pleasant to see, actually. I quite enjoyed that. So there's some improvements there as well. And also the field of view felt a little nicer. It did feel like 110. It didn't feel quite as big as something like the Index or quite as small as something like the Rift S, but it sat, definitely sat somewhere in between. It was quite nice. And one area of this that has improved over the original Cosmos is obviously the tracking. We, uh, we have outside tracking with the uh, lighthouses 
um, which they're also known as the HTC 5 base stations. So we do have them now and they make excellent, perfect tracking. I've not had a problem. Can my rig, my PC or my box, depending on what you call it, play games on this headset because it's driving that 1700p screen. Well, I have an RTX 2080 Ti, so I've literally got the most powerful gaming graphics card that money can buy, and it is not a cheap graphics card neither. And it kind of runs most games really well. Some odd games like The Wizard's Dark Times, for instance, runs quite rubbish, but it runs quite rubbish to begin with anyway. And if you had a Rift S like I did when I did my review, it runs perfectly fine on that because obviously that's only a 1400p screen. But then I also got to talk about the reproje reprojection. Reprojection uh, can kick in and I find that when it kicks in, it's it's terrible. It's, it does not hold a candle to the Oculus Asynchronous Warp 2 technology that they use. Theirs is literally up here and everyone else's is right down here until you get to Windows Mixed Reality, which is almost, sometimes doesn't even want to work, I think. Um, it's, yeah, it's not nice. And when it does kick in, it's kind of jank as well. Um, so when you're running at 45 FPS with the Rift S, for instance, you will know you're doing it, but it will feel smooth. But with this, it will feel like you're running at 40 FPS. Like, so you're like, what's it reprojecting? I don't get it. it just seems to be half in my FPS. Um, <laughs> so it's not very pleasant. So just like with a lot of headsets, I would like to run at full max frame rates to get the smoothest I can and if you're one of those people that want to do that yes pushing some of these games might be pretty difficult if you've got anything lower than a 2080 Ti. I kind of feel like my RTX though 2080 Ti is literally pushing that 1700 pre-screen the best it can with a look oh my god he's got the elite plugged in let's do a runner out of his PC box you know, like it just grows some legs and it's like, oh, I'm out of it. It doesn't really want to push that 1700p very well in a lot of graphically games. Uh, so yeah, you want to be extremely careful. I would say though, a 1080 Ti or a 2080 would be preferred for this headset. However, if you don't mind reducing super sampling or graphics settings, then your rusty GPU might hold up but only if it's a supported GPU. So here we are at the noise. And this is also the same as the original Cosmos. It's okay, it doesn't hold a candle to the CV1 and the amazing index cans, but it does have deep, strong bass in there that you'll, uh, you, they, they will be happy about, you'll be happy about it. And I can hear footsteps really loud in contractors. So that's a plus. So it's very good for competitive games, for sure. So here we go, yes. For one, the mod is easy enough to do and I wouldn't worry about damaging anything as well. Anything from the 3D parts to the full kit and a tutorial on how to detach it from my man, VR Gamer Dude, will be in the description below. So did I mess up? Well, at first I kind of put the lenses back to front <laughs> and uh, also got some dust inside it as well. Um, so definitely buy an air duster like um, Gamer Dude tells you to do, VR Gamer Dude tells you to do, because if you don't, then you're going to get some of that 3D printed material probably in there, and it will, uh, or some of the glue around the edges as well, that peels off and can fall in there. I got hair in there at one point. I don't know how I got hair in there. It, it wasn't even from me uh, or anyone that lives here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it probably, I've got HTC uh, employee hair in there somewhere. I ate it. Mm. I didn't. So anyway, when all those issues were sorted, did it make it any better? Well, short answer is yes. But we don't do short answers here. Nah, nah, we're gonna delve into it a little bit more. Uh, yes, the sweet spot on the horizontal has improved. Yes, it's improved 
enough to enjoy games now. Yes, I can actually use this now. It's kind of similar to the Rift S, but probably a little bit worse, but it's close enough now that I can actually enjoy playing this in VR. The sweet spot has improved. However, I can't help thinking though that this is at the cost of the field of view because the lenses are smaller. So surely, um, I feel like the field of, the field of uh, view has shrunk quite a bit, if I'm going to be completely on, honest with you. But it still doesn't match the Index or the Rift S, like I said. The, those have got a better sweet swap by far, especially the Index, which is all the way to the end. I didn't realize the God Rays. I didn't even bother to look because I didn't even see them. So either that's hugely improved, like Rift S standard improvement, or I just didn't see it at all. And going on about Mora as well from earlier, uh, I, you know, it's hard to see if there's any Mora in there, um, unless it's a lot like the HP Reverb uh, version one was like, uh, and like the PlayStation VR is like, I'm pointing that way because that's where it used to be. Um, but I can't see any, so that's great. And uh, the chromatic aberrations, I, I couldn't see any neither before or even after the mod. I say artifacts have been reduced quite a lot. I did see some warping when I first put it on, especially in Steam Home, but then when I got into Half-Life Alex and then a few other games, I suddenly didn't see it anymore. So it was almost like it just corrected itself for warping or something. It was very odd. Um, definitely uh, a lot better now. Um, definitely have to break it in. After doing the lens mod, um, it only goes down to about 63 millimeters on the IPD. It goes a little bit lower now and then, but that's a bit weird because I'm I'm around 60 millimeters, but I still found it quite sharp and I still found it very good. So maybe that scales a little off, who knows, but it seemed to be very good. So here we are at another conclusion of another VR headset from HTC. And so far it's been mixed bags, hasn't it? The Vive Pro, I loved. I actually really like the Vive Pro. I thought it was pretty damn good. Now the price is obviously a lot cheaper when you can pick it up cheap and stuff. Obviously the price was the biggest concern of the Vive Pro. The Cosmos, the original Cosmos tracking was awful. The sweet spot was awful. I mean, there were the two things that bothered me so much about that headset. Pretty much the only things that bothered me about that headset. I could have probably lived with the really chunktastic controllers. And plus they were really nice looking. Go to bed with them at night, you know, give them a cuddle. So how does the HTC Vive Elite Cosmos Elite Elite Cosmos, the Elite version of the original Cosmos. I think that's probably the way we should look at it. It's just a faceplate after all. Well, that faceplate makes a big difference, obviously. For one, it, it kind of has a better sweet spot than the original Cosmos. Don't know how. Has less God rays. Don't know how. Um, might be just more tuning out of the box. I haven't got a clue since the uh, release versions of the Cosmos, the original Cosmos. And the God Rays seem to be smaller and it's overall nicer. It, it, the God Rays in it are a million times more dealable. I can deal with it so much more than the glare of the index. I know God Rays glare doesn't bother everybody, but it bothers me so much. Um, as much as the sweet spot, which I've probably said about, I don't know, is anyone counting? So I would say when you do the lens mod though, it becomes nearly as sharp as the HP Reverb. It's that sharp when you're playing games and it's really, really nice to see. And obviously now I can actually play it because the sweet spot is big enough to enjoy games. So the mod is definitely worth it, but only worth it if you plan to keep the headset, which then raises a question, who's this headset for? Well, I'd say anyone that wants to go wireless, I mean, the wireless adapter works with this headset. Yeah, you're going to have to buy like a little attachment kit, which is probably about 50 bones or more. But, you know, as soon as you get that and the HTC uh, wireless adapter, you're going to be wireless. So if you don't like cables, this is probably going to be for you. If you're somebody who doesn't even like the glare of the index, but wants that kind of resolution again, this is for you. I do recommend though you get yourself some of those index controllers because they are far more superior in my opinion to the ones. Now I don't have a wireless adapter but if I can source one and I can get one 
we'll do another review on this. So overall, the HTC Cosmos Elite, Vive Cosmos Elite, the Elite of the Cosmos, the, the Master Race version of VR. Uh, what would I say about it? Well, I definitely think it's a very good headset. Now the tracking is sorted with the outside tracking device. I, I think it's definitely great with the index controllers. A bit worried about support with the headset um, so far. I'm a bit worried about what kind of games you could run on it because I like graphics just as much as anybody else. But I'm very worried that um, I might have to reduce those graphics to run some games even with my 2080 Ti. So that's kind of worrying. You've got to really, really think about that part when you go to buy this. And also, if you want that larger sweet spot, you may have to mod it as well. And that is some tinkering you may not want to do, even though it's easy. It was quite easy for me today. Obviously, you know, you want an air duster to make sure you don't get any stuff um, you know, 3D bits and dust onto your lens, onto your screen, should I say. So you want to make sure you do that perfectly right. But it does look great inside. You know, it's nice not having any real Mora that's noticeable. Um, I didn't, when, when I did the mod as well, I would want to point out that I, you know, other than the warping, which could be the barrel problem, uh, barrel roll problem, um, it definitely is not there now since I last tested it. So definitely worth doing the mod. Um, so yeah, I quite like it. After the mod, I quite like the headset. I'm just a bit worried about what I can run on it and what it supports. Where, well, you know, with the Rift S, you can literally just play anything and it mostly 99.9999% will support the headset. So where with this, I'm just a little bit worried that one, something might not support it or two, you know, that 1700p is just too much to run the next massive candy gorgeous looking game without me having to sacrifice a lot like graphic settings and super sampling and then it gets all blurry and then suddenly you know I've got something that probably looks sharper in the Rift S after I've done all that and more better looking so yeah I just have those issues but when I get the wireless adapter am I going to be just like on every forum saying why don't you support this headset because <laughs> because I, I love it uh, it's a very good headset. So if you like this review, please give me a like and also subscribe because it goes straight to the heart. Hit that bell button if you want to watch more videos like this and leave a comment of anything you may want to ask me or anything you may have seen in this video today. Thank you for watching. I love you long time and ciao.